So recently I bought the Cinebot 30. Uh, great little indoor slash outdoor whoop, but I find it's going to be a little bit too powerful, noisy for an indoor whoop. Um, so I'm going to be flying it outdoor with a little bit of mix of cruising long range. And the one thing I'm worried about is not having a GPS for GPS rescue. So what I've done is decided to put in something like this little uh, TBS MH2 GPS, relatively inexpensive. What I did is I imported a model that I'd tinkered before, uh, and this is for the TBS MH2 GPS. I'm gonna chop and slice and put two models together. Uh, cut a long story short, um, I'll be cutting off some of this here at the back. Um, and then I'll be slicing this GPS piece off at the back and then I'll be molding them together and I have done that already and in here you'll see the two models I've done M82 GPS um, with the same little Cinebot 30 connector here and I'll print that out quickly uh, show you the results and we'll start on the bench and get that going so here's our model imported into Prusa Slicer I'm going to print in TPU. I use Sane Smart. That's the best TPU I find. Um, all the settings are set to TPU. Everything I find is the most reliable. Uh, the only thing I did change on here or add was paint on supports on the areas that I wanted it. Uh, TPU and supports generally can be difficult to uh, pull apart once they're done, but some parts here I think are going to be necessary uh, with the minimal amount of supports. Um, so what we'll do is um, we'll give us a slice up just to show you how this is going to come out sliced only put in three layers uh, or three outlines so the top is strong the outside has got three so it's not so heavy and there's our supports so that the overhangs have got something to print over when they come out This is the original part that doesn't take the TBS MA2. This is the custom one that I created uh, with Tinkercad that takes the MH2 perfectly according to their sales pitch. Very quick disassembly by taking one, two, three, four, five, and six out. I have to say that was reasonably painless. Hmm. Okay, so there we have six screws, three cables disconnected, and it just comes apart like that. I have to say, a lot easier than I thought it would be. So unfortunately, no easy way to take this receiver out because there's this little pocket here that holds it down against the carbon at the bottom. You need to completely disassemble everything to take it out, to detach the antenna from the crossfire receiver or whatever receiver. Uh, pop the antenna out of here and then down through the new one and then re-shrink wrap etc struggled quite a bit to get these cables through here but what i did is i put uh, some type of screwdriver or hex driver through uh, to open up the gap and then i managed to get them through no problem nice right so i think i've managed to put everything back together properly um aerial both aerials through here. GPS has got a separate cable that's going to be plugged in once we put the top closer and then back on. Uh, and then we hope everything works. Um, should have probably tested the GPS first before I put everything together. Anyway, that's how the lobby goes. So we finally have the finished product after a little bit of a frustrating unbuild and rebuild. GPS installed. Try to keep the color coding the same. So you get past these TPUs, like a bit of a green and yellow mix. Uh, the yellow is closer to it than a green. Uh, now to plug into Betaflight, activate the GPS. Hope to hell that it actually comes on and I haven't got the RX and TX pads in the wrong way. Um, and if that's the case, just set fail safe and then hopefully head out to do a bit of a flight at some point soon. 
Right, so I've connected up to Betaflight and I've configured the GPS as you can see now it's showing up so I'm pretty happy I don't have to detach and redo everything. Uh, what I did is I went to ports, I attached it to UART4 and I turned on GPS, set to auto and it's picked up the board rate. Um, I did notice that out the box UART5 actually said GPS um, which I disabled and turned this on to GPS. Um, then I went to uh, configuration made sure GPS was turned on, changed that to U-Blocks, um, and then went to GPS. Uh, could see that it was showing some data. Um, fail safe. Need to go to fail safe. Tell it what to do if you lose any signals, etc. Uh, I think drop was the default. GPS rescue I've changed. Set it to 37 angle. Um, and also I've allowed arming without a fix because if I want to take off and just fly and close proximity etc I can do so and I changed the min satellites from 8 to 5. Alright I uh, set AUX4 for GPS rescue. Oh, one other thing I forgot is to actually add some OSD elements. Uh, I like to have GPS latitude and longitude so uh, latitude can go on the top here longitude home direction absolutely right in the front here and how can we forget sets need to know how many sets we've got so I took this outside for a little hover it works perfectly I took it off without waiting for the satellites to build up uh, just to make sure everything's still operational uh, before I take it out on a real flight um, I will take some decent footage of um, a bit of a longer flight. I'll try and capture the OSD on here um, if I can. Um, but if anyone's wanting to do this, just bear in mind you've got to take a lot of stuff undone here again. The wires are tight. I battled to get the two sandwiched back together while trying to plug in everything, specifically the GPS. Um, even although I left my cable a little bit longer than um, the rest of them, it was quite difficult to fit around and through here um, so frustration level I don't know maybe a six seven out of ten uh, but well worth it um, looking forward to getting it going